Alrighty, here's our, doo -doo -doo -doo, our first lesson in throwing. You want to start by getting your claymation worked in. Even if it's from a fresh bag, you still want to work it in a little bit. <clears throat> Just make a nice cone out of it. I'm going to moisten the bottom just a skosh so that it will adhere to the wheel better. Now, the rounder your clay is to start with, the easier it is to center. And for the new folks, centering is always the toughest part. Now, I use a, a kick wheel. I kick it to get it started, but it's got a power assist so I can help power through the centering portion. So, beginners usually end up doing this, trying to get their clay centered, and they just end up chasing a lump of clay around the table. This is what their hands look like, okay? Let me show you what the hands will look like uh, when you're centering it with correct energy. Here we go. We're, first, we're going to cup it and push it down with the thumbs. This gives the clay a good foundation on the wheel. Now, to start centering the clay, we're actually squeezing from this part of the hand to this part of the right hand. Left hand, right hand. And you're squeezing that clay until it comes up. You see how that clay raised up in my hands? It's because of the squeezing pressure. I'm not trying to follow the clay or pull it up. I'm squeezing the clay up. Now we got to put it back down again. Now this has to be done several times to get your clay body completely even. Now you see there's an uneven lump at the top. That's because the core, even though we look like we're centered on the wheel, the core of the clay still needs to be worked to center. I don't know if you can tell, but there's ripples in the clay. You see the ripples. Those can't be there. So we keep doing this and doing this until everybody comes out even. And you know what? It may seem like it takes forever. Sometimes it does, especially when you're using stiff clay. Okay, that looks real good too, but I can still feel the inside. The inside is what's really important here. So don't worry about what it looks like at this point. Think of, concentrate on what it feels like. Okay, now as I went back down, I could feel the inside settle down, and I'm ready to open it up. Now for opening, there's several different ways. You can either cup the work with your left hand and work your center finger in, or you can take both hands and use the thumbs. It depends to me on what size of pot I'm throwing. 
as to how I'm going to open this. But I'm going to start with my thumbs to create a nice large cavity. And then I'm going to finish it with my fingers. I put the water in there to follow my fingers down so that I'm always lubricated. You want to keep the pot lubricated because if the clay sticks to your hands, well then it moves and it'll twist and you end up with an uneven pot. So now comes a very critical moment. When we go to open the clay, these two fingers are going to go to the bottom and they're going to move inwards, pushing the very bottom section of the clay outwards towards this hand. This hand is going to receive that pressure with this knuckle bent just like that, holding it stiff. So these two fingers against this knuckle, I'm going to squeeze in. Now, a lot of people will just pull straight up. That's okay, that's acceptable. But I have found that if I push in and then rock my hands together, gently squeezing the clay to the top, I get a much more uniform first pull. And this is what that'll look like. I've got my fingers now in. You can see how far into the clay my fingers go. And now I'm just squeezing my fingers, rocking them towards my right hand. You can see that we opened and went up. Now, I don't need power anymore. I'm going to turn the motor off. Now I can start just pulling up. Our goal is to get a straight walled cylinder. We don't want to let our clay flare out. We want it to go straight up. The key to getting that because the clay wants to go out is to try and pull actually towards the center. It feels like you're moving a long ways towards the center, but in reality, you're going straight up. So here's how that looks. Again, these two fingers move in at the bottom towards this hand. You don't push this hand in towards the center. And now we just gently move forward or move up. And what we're doing is squeezing the clay into this rising motion. It has to be done in rhythm with the speed of the wheel. Otherwise, you end up leaving thick spots or thin spots. And that can ruin the wall of your pot. Again, these two fingers work towards this knuckle. Push in, gently move up. If your wheel is going fast, you can move up a bit faster. If it's going slow, then the idea is to go slower. This is it. This is what you need to work on for any first project. Just get a cylinder. Once you've got the cylinder, then you can start working towards other things. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I certainly enjoyed putting it together for you. And remember, the only way to fail at ceramics is to give up. It's not easy. Uh, it's a lot more work than it looks. So don't let looks be deceiving. There's lots of muscle to be used. I say uh, for most people, the best thing is to view as many YouTube videos as you can of people throwing and watch their hands. Uh, it doesn't matter what they're working on. It, you, can, you can either watch people do a simple bowl or some very extravagant 
piece, but watch their hands. Watch the muscles uh, and try and get your hands and your mind coordinated with the clay. There you go. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay, now we have we have ourselves a nice tall cylinder. Let's see what we can make out of it, okay? Cylinders are, are the basis of everything. You've got your cylinder. So I have with me this special tool that I use for opening and flattening bottoms. Because the bottoms oftentimes uh, when when you have got your piece open and you've got your walls up the bottom is a little irregular so I use this to create a more regular surface on the bottom you can see how it caused a bulge that's okay because I'm going to go back down there and I'm going to create a more vertical wall here. Remember, you, the water is very important to keep your pot lubricated in your hands. You can see there's a dry spot. You can see my hand move every time that dry spot comes around. Alrighty, now there's this, uh, this little flange edge on the bottom of the pot. We can get rid of that because we can either wait till the pot is dry and try and trim it away, or we can trim it away right now and we won't have to worry about it later. some of the slip that's in the pot. Now that we've fixed the bottom, we can keep that dry. And I like to keep my wheel clean too. It just uh, feels better. Okay, now I've got this nice straight cylinder. What to do, what to do, what to do. Well, let's try closing it. How's that? Sound like fun. Okay, so we're going to get the outside nice and wet. Now, I'm using a kind of clay that really likes to dry up fast and it gets real sticky. So, I've got to keep this surface rather moist. This is called uh, necking. Right? It, well, no, it's not like back in high school days where you used to park with your. Uh, significant other but what I'm doing is I'm just gently squeezing the pot and uh, collaring is actually the word but what it does is it's creating a neck on the piece that I'm working on this is going to end up more of a small bottle Now you have to be real careful because once clay has been expanded, it doesn't necessarily like to be compressed again. So you have to leave, I have found that if you leave uh, a lot of material at the mouth, if this is what you're going to do, it will compress easier than a thin wall. A thin wall will start to ripple. You can see the rippling start here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this top away just enough to make it all even again. If I can find my needle tool, here it is. It was hiding. Now to to do this trick, well, it's not really a trick. It's uh, it's just a necessary thing. Take the needle tool, finger on the inside, needle tool on the outside, 
and you're not going to go straight into the clay. You're going to uh, let the clay kind of open as you move your needle tool towards your finger. Once you feel it at your finger, boom, that's done. Now I can continue closing that bottleneck a little bit more. This will also tell just how how well you centered your pot uh, because you'll have one thick side, one thin side, and the thick side will show up by being taller. It will, it will create this uneven lip on your pot. Now for your sake, we got lucky. We got this pretty darn close. So there we go, that's a nice neat little jug. Nice tool to always have on hand is a steel rib. This guy's great for inside and outside work. For outside work, we can smooth the walls of whatever it is we're doing. We can remove all this slip, which makes the pot a lot easier to handle uh, when you're trying to take it off of the wheel. Almost looks like an old-timey milk bottle, doesn't it? Yeah, it's going to be nice. You won't see anybody throwing baseballs at it, though. Okay, here's another nice piece for finishing. Uh, you can use anything from a sturdy paper towel, plastic bag, uh, whatever. I use a little piece of... Uh, leather, soft leather, and by wetting it and just running it across the, along the edge of your uh, pot rim, whether it be uh, a drinking mug or a vessel such as this or even a bowl, it creates a nice soft finish to your rim. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed that. Something you can do with a cylinder. Have a good day. Alrighty, now how about putting a, uh, how about a handle, a, a little handle on that? Well, here's how we start. Get ourselves another nice lump of clay. start up. Now this is what's called pulling a handle. Okay, so get it nice and wet, get your hands wet, and pull the handle. I'm not sure which camera to use. I think this is the best one for this treatment. Now I've got it nice and wet and slick and I'm just gently squeezing as I move down. Just gently. You squeeze too much, you end up putting a big old dent in it. Don't squeeze enough and it doesn't go anywhere. So now I take a, I, come on, it's a palette knife. Yeah, a nice simple little palette knife. 
and I'll cut it about a 45, about, okay? Nobody's going to measure for you. There you go, about a 45 degree angle. And turn it upside down. Now this side is going to go to the jug. And we're going to put, uh, oh, there we go. We always want to try and, and scuff up the areas that you want to join. Finger goes inside to provide counter resistance. Let that mend there. All right, these finger marks, they don't look good. I don't like the little finger marks all over the wet clay. So I have a cure for those finger marks. It's another brush. But this is a very long haired, soft brush. And I just brush away those finger marks. brush the entire joint so it looks smooth and untouched. There you go. Put that on the shelf, let it rest for about three days and it's ready for the kiln.